The other Abbey Road plugin, which I really was into, I kind of discovered this randomly messing around with it, is the RS-56. Now, the thing I liked about this is like, not only is it a gorgeous sounding EQ, and it does the a really great air band EQ to it that is kind of hard to find in a lot of EQs, particularly in digital EQs. I think it did an amazing job of modeling the sort of textures and curves of this Abbey Road EQ. One thing that they did, which I thought was incredibly clever, is integrate a mid-side element to the EQ. And for me, one thing that it does really, really well is it helps you create a, a wider stereo image. Because like in this case, I've got it on the vocal channel and the vocal effects return channels on this track. And when I turn it on, you'll hear how the vocal still says focus because I'm pushing the mids and EQing the mids a certain way. But it also gets a little wider because I'm adding extra air and EQ to the sides. So to me, like when you listen to it, the vocal sits like this, and then I turn the RS-56 on, and all of a sudden the vocal kind of goes like that, which is one of those things that I find in the digital world hard to kind of accomplish, which is that sense of width. So with, for me, with the Abbey Road plate reverb, I really feel like I get a sense of depth. And with this RS-56, I really get a sense that I can create some extra width to it. So to give you an idea, I'll show you what it sounds like coming out of the verse into the chorus here. So this is the RS-56 bypassed. Sounds good. But when you turn it on, it creates, to me, you know, it gets a little bit louder because I'm adding some EQ, but it adds a width and brings out some of the texture and some of the effects on the tracks, on the vocal tracks. And the way I did that was by using the mid-side element of it and turning up the sides some, so it brings up just the sides. And on the sides, I brought down a lot of the low end. I had taken down 6 dB on a shelf at 256 hertz. So I'm getting rid of a lot of the low end, which I'm putting back in in the mids. And on the sides, I'm adding a lot of top end that I'm taking away from the mids. So I'm kind of effectively EQing the mid-range information to be right in the center, and then all the high-end information to really be kind of pushed and hyped on the outside. And to me, that's where you kind of get a, sen a real sense of three dimension because the vocal kind of goes wider than it normally would. So um, I'll demo it again from the verse and I'll have it out and I'll put it back in. You don't have much, but it's what you need. You don't have much, but it's what you need. I feel lucky with the worst luck that I met you and I felt messed up. I feel lucky with the worst luck that I met you and I felt messed up. I feel lucky with the worst luck. Wish I met you now for. So again, for me, that's one of those things that's really hard sometimes to accomplish um, in the world of digital. And I feel like they've done an amazing job of capturing not only the sonic characteristics of this particular EQ, but doing something with a modern twist to it that allows you to solve you know, a problem or create something that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do even in the analog world. Um, and that's one of the things I really like about how Waves approaches plug-in design. They're not necessarily just limited to a, 
completely accurate representation of something. They're trying to figure out a way to do something that's still creative and unique, building upon things like the Abbey Road equipment that not only sounds fantastic, but also where can we go in the future with it? What else can we add to it? How else can we be creative with it?